Hey folks, we're back. So with the noise in the background, it's a little bit lo uh, louder than normal, and I guess uh, the PC bombing zone is currently at. Uh, but we'll be getting into another replay, and then we're going to start taking things down to set up for the Overwatch finals. So, we have another caster. We've hosted him a couple of times, and we've talked about him a bunch. Hopefully you guys know who Unsteady is at this point. But we have to sort some things with him before we get the actual uh, tournament rocking and rolling. So, hopefully you guys will eh, enjoy this last replay. This one's going to be against... Oh, we actually know who this is. Natural. Yep. Could be a game, good game. Who knows? Yeah, the nice thing about a replay pack is like you really don't know how it'll go. Although, the question is kind of begged. Oops, that's the Overwatch overlay. Uh, is Scarlet the type of person to be vain and send... Oh, that's the wrong overlay too. There we go. Naked one. Is Scarlet the type of person to be vain enough to send a replay pack of only games she's won? Or she just pick like, okay, here was the last like twenty replays from ladder, win or lose, take them and enjoy them. I don't uh, know. What I really enjoyed actually uh, casting like the Muslims replay packs, for example. See, I think he would just drag and drop the most recent replays, and some would be really good, and then you'd have a couple where you would lose miserably, and you're like, why did you put this in the replay pack, bro? And, like the best one I ever remember trying to cast was I loaded it up. It was like a seven second game. Because his opponent left like right away. And I don't think he realized that that was in the replay pack because he just like selected all the recent ones, right? <laughs> Amazing. So glad I got that. Oh well. Okay, well, in the top right side of the map, guys, we've got the Red Zerg. What do you know? It's Scarlet. In the bottom left is the Blue Terran. He is natural. So I love the question in chat. So I'm going to find times that someone asks you in Korea, and you say none. But I'm wondering how many times, for example, maybe it's something simple on Tinder or a Korean guy trying to think about talking to you, and then you just, you missed the cue type thing. I don't think I would have missed a cue. I mean, like, I realize I'm not, like, well, picking up on, like, so many signals. But... Well, I bring this up because I remember there's that one guy you were telling me that kept trying to, like, hang out with you. Through Tinder when we were watching the uh, the Brood War finals. It was a, what? The the one guy that was like, "Hey, do you want to hang out before you leave?" And I was like, "Sorry, I said yes by mistake or whatever." Remember and like well, reply to like another the, question the, he had asked. Yeah, the mistiming was another question he'd asked, and I just explained to him like, "Yeah, I'm not even gonna be here for like a couple, like I'm only gonna be here for like two more days." And he's like, "Oh, thanks for explaining," and that was it. Oh, that reminds me real quick. Uh, you haven't checked Tinder, have you? <laughs> Not since like three, four days ago. Okay, great. Um, just ignore the message I sent you on there, because <laughs> I got drunk and started hitting on everybody at karaoke, uh, and I felt really stupid about it. You got you Good. got included in the shotgun of that list. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Man, karaoke was really bad. Actually, I just want to express this frustration real quick. Like, okay, you had the drinks, you had the private room. It's like every other karaoke I've been to, or so I thought. But there's like a couple of major flaws, and the number one is I don't think this the people who own this place know what acoustics are. I think they just put a couple of rooms together with a door and a speaker system, right? They didn't think that there'd be this awful echo and reverb. So you get past that because you're drinking, you're like, let's just sing for fun. But I realized all the the songs and the videos they had, they didn't take the words out. So you were singing along to a music video of like them singing as well. So it's not it's not that there's like the tune with no words and it's you guys doing the words. If you were just to say nothing, it would be like the music video playing as if it was like on YouTube type thing. Yeah. It was, it was So they, they didn't have a karaoke version of the songs. No. Legit. And the best part was for a lot of these songs, the uh the, the the bottom part that shows you like when you're supposed to say the words was out of sync with the video itself. <laughs> But they had the actual music video? For some songs, but like suddenly had the generic oh, like, oh, oh here's yeah. the copyright clip, right? But even then, like, like we were, uh, we, we got fed up on, I hope you've seen this guy on YouTube. The guy who does the Smash Mouth covers with every song. Like he'll sing Wonderwall, no. but it'll be the lyrics to Smash Mouth All-Star, like that sort of thing. That sounds that's like giving me a head trip right now. <laughs> this guy's hilarious, you gotta check him out. But anyways, we just started doing that, like with all the songs, we just started singing the Smash Mouth lyrics to like, <laughs> Was it a Korean karaoke? Because maybe that's where you fucked up. I want to say it was like Korean or Chinese. It was Asian. Oh, okay. Then I don't know. Just crappy. Yeah, it was... It was whatever. Uh, but, man, I will say the one upside was 
the drinks were pretty cheap. And while they didn't have anything fun like soju, uh, I bought everyone tequila shots, and we got like eight of them for like 20 bucks. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, man, that's pretty good. I quickly learned how much other people are also bad at drinking tequila, but that's another story for another time. We got some drops attempting to go off in the main. Natural trying to elevate some Hellions. Kind of a. Reminds me of Journey. Yo, what happened to Journey? Uh, he retired? Didn't he? Did, did he? I don't actually know. I feel I'm like asking. A, a Livy I, actually told us something about him. I actually kind of forgot all about him until just now because Journey would do some really cool elevation with Hellions on this map back in uh, Hots. Oh, yeah. Wow, this was actually in the first Alima League finals. Do you remember? Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. Like, Biscuit had to cast it and we got to cast it the second time. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god. Wow. That's, that's that why I just had like an go. oh my god moment, right? <laughs> like that was the, the revelation of memory, I guess. Pretty crazy. Well, yeah, I think she might have mentioned your tire, but I, I'm, I'm not like 100% sure if that was. If I'm just completely like misremembering. Because yeah. it'd be great if he didn't, but I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah. All right, well, looks like for a lot of this, not much has gotten done. I like the attempts out of natural, but. Yeah, he's just falling back. Uh, third CC's finished up as part of the wall. He'll move that over in a bit of time. In fact, he'll do it right now. He's getting really, really dedicated with these bunkers. I guess super scared of the attack. Yeah, maybe burned one too many times by Baneling attack counter. The tank is going to do a great job holding, though. I think natural should be okay. Uh, third base might get a little bit annoying to deal with, but his natural should be pretty much on lockdown, I feel. Well, that is his name. Yeah, I guess he was just afraid of what the Roach Warren might have been for, so that sal that bunker should be salvaged, or kind of replaced at the third base. Well, moving out with some of the medevacs, of course, the uh, the army here is not that big out of natural. Not a lot of things you can really get done. Maybe clean up some of the creep, because God knows Scarlet's been spreading crazy creep. We saw the dedication it took from Ryung to keep her creep spread back, and even that didn't keep it back. She eventually still got half the map under her control. Natural has not put much effort into it, and it's kind of showing. Yeah, not even really getting anything done with that one scan. Trying to go into the main base now. Uh, Lings do attack the third base, and unfortunately the bunker wasn't replaced. So that's pretty big oversight on overgrowth. <laughs> Uh, Hellions? Can they turn to Hellbats yet? No, they don't. Oh, okay, the armor just finished up, so maybe that'll be what he pushes forward with. Uh, the Hellions could also chase down the drones a lot easier than the Marines could, for example, but saving a focus down the spawning pole is not a bad alternative. I mean, Scarlet's got a Bailey Nest, but it's no good if she can't make more links for said Bailey Nest. She starts up another spawning pole immediately elsewhere, though. I, mean, I think she knew that was going to go down. No chance to survive, type thing. Yeah. Well, drones didn't really. Oh, they kind of lined up, but the more was going to go down. Well, I need still 14 in total. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Medivax almost oh. don't make it out of there. Nice Ooh. quick skirting out for natural. Bit of damage, but nothing too devastating. Scarlet is going to have enough time to recover the spawning blood of the wings. Yeah. Yeah, and that is the most important part. I mean, it was kind of like the, the lamest time to kill a spawning pool. You had just dropped all of your units on the front lines. And your second push is not really that scary. If you have his tank push ready to go and he goes spawning pool, it's like, oh shit. Uh, or like the Baneling Nest, that's a pretty big deal. Else really happening this is at most going to clear up creep which again you're talking about like needs to happen here and it's just not yeah especially because scarlet has been playing like, with with i guess not the fastest tech to bailing speed but she is getting bailing speed now this creep spread's already gonna be hard enough to manage but if you really want to take a good fight versus bailings you have to fight them off of creep and there's almost nothing here that is off of creep yeah well there's something kind of weird going on in like scarlet's part of the map Oh, I was going to say, like, where's the 2-2? Natural's getting so far ahead on the 2-2. I mean, she's already... She's playing kind of like a weird game, just by like going roaches and banelings and upgrading lings. It's like one of the oldest ways you can get to ultras, uh, like, for instance, which she might be getting with these infestors. But I, would never, I never really felt like that was her go-to roaches at all, basically, unless she was forced to, so... I don't know, like, uh, it just is weird to see the 2-2 so far behind, and that will give Natural, like, a 2-2 timing with as many tanks as he's collected. Uh, pulling that medevac back. He's so scared of her sniping it, but that got just barely all these little touch-and-go heals. These Marines kill three Queens now. 
maybe even an Overlord. A couple links on top of this will eventually clean it up. Top left side gets dealt with as well. Natural's got to pull some of these medivacs back. Yeah, save the medivacs. So one thing I will say for Natural, like I really like seeing more and more tanks come out. He's actually a player we've seen struggle. Oh, the Viking lands. <laughs> uh, he's a player we've actually seen struggle when it comes to like ultraless tech, right? Scarlet's moved to Hive. She's already shown she's willing to go ultras versus Ryung. Broodlords too, if necessary. But ultralisks are going to get wrecked by tanks now. Beforehand, I mean, the tanks have such a long cooldown. Their attack damage was so little for it. It just it didn't bother or even phase ultras. But now with 75 damage a shot through what just one level of upgrade, these ultras will take some very significant damage if that's the direction she's going. Yeah, I feel like it should be uh, with these upgrades, but I do have reservations about how great the tanks are going to be. Like, yeah, I think they're better, and I think they're going to be a better respond, like better mid and late game unit because of it. But I do still wish, like, whenever you go tanks, you eventually get the second factory. You know, three base fully saturated, second, second factory goes down, or yeah. maybe you wait to the fourth base, but still it eventually comes down, and he just hasn't gotten it. So, you know, tank count's not bad now at five. Could have been more, obviously. But oh. it's more about, like, you can't replace them if they all go die here. And then the ultras come out, and what does he get for his, his response? I would say, especially when you're investing in weapon upgrades like this too, right? Like, plus two weapons is on the way. That's going to be a huge deal. Family's running from the north side, getting on top of a lot of the Marines initially. Ravagers deal with those tanks. Feels bad when you can't reposition them. They got some pretty good shots off, though. They did some pretty nice damage, and both players, despite the fact that this looks way worse for natural, still trade out kind of evenly. Yeah, but of course, a lot of that has to do with Scarlet not remaxing. Uh, she does have the Larva. I thought she would, but I think she's trying to also save money for the Ultras that are on the way now, as well as all of the upgrades just putting the reduction down. Yeah, I mean, that's that's <laughs> right there. That's so much gas. It's like a thousand gas and upgrades right there. Uh, ultras are not going to be that numerous, though. She's only got really one started up, but the drops are pushed back enough for now. Uh, meanwhile, Natural did manage to get two expansions up. If you can actually start mining off of both of these, that would be just absolutely fantastic. And that's where you start affording things like the second factory and, and all that jazz. But with 3-3 three, three and plenty of Marauders and more in production, I don't know he'll be in trouble too soon. Oh. I keep waiting for the like the fungal cross about to kill all those medevacs. Yeah, I think we're going to be able to put them. Ah, uh, Natural is rallying. I mean, he expanded. Whoa. Oh, he double expanded. Well, kind of. Oh, okay, so that's the main base, and then he expanded to the gold. I was going to say he expanded towards his attack point, but that's not entirely true, because he expanded to the east as well, the right side. Well, as long as she never sends any lings over there, then that's going to be fantastic. So I do like the tanks. I don't like the lack of liberators. I think that's actually going to hurt him a bit. He does finally sort of some production, but I guess uh, without the, the notification it was Ultras, there wasn't that priority for liberators. This drop can't pick up everything, so some of these guys are unfortunately going to die. Yeah, at least they got the snipe on the base. And, you know, Scarlet, you know, has a healthy economy, like a healthy bank of 72 drones. But she does need the base to use said healthy economy. So it's, it's like, it would be a big deal if he had, like, an immediate follow-up again, basically. Which, uh, it's not so immediate. It's kind of stranded in the middle now, not willing to push any further. Ooh. Attack the natural, though, might just get an upgrade. Nah, it gets picked up. But if he had been able to shut down plus three armor, that would have been really nice. I think at this point, you're really worried about the Zerg Therapist more than the weapons. I mean, if you're dying to melee attacks, it's not because one guy's well upgraded. It's because there's like a hundred on you. <laughs> Medivac in the middle of the map. His two health does get picked off. Ouch. But the top side. Okay, some Curse of Bowels. Wastes a bit of a fungal. This positioning, though, is really, I think, favoring natural if you can get these liberators set up correctly. Those liberation zones are going to create some nasty-ass chokes. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh... I mean, it might be a problem, but she did already add that spire on, so getting corruptors of response wouldn't be that big of a deal. Banelings are seen. That was a lot of banelings. That is a lot of banelings, yeah. Cancel. She's going to walk away with that. I mean, the planetary had picked off a couple of links. He knew something was going to be there. Well, he does fight the top left. He's going to pick up some drones. Actually, a lot of drones on that transfer, too. Scarlet losing a lot of workers now. Up to 50 workers killed. However, that's still a mighty, unbreakable ultralisk force that comes into the natural base. The fourth and the fifth might be secure, air quotes, around this. But if you lose your natural, if you lose your third, this is where production is, too. That's the tech lab for the Marauders, right? He doesn't actually have any way to really deal with the ultras. 
Maybe. Well, coming back and trying to snipe the Infestors might help, and he doesn't get a lot of them. Only one left. The tanks aren't sieged, though. Liberators can still be taking care of the frozen biles. Units preppers aren't here quite yet, and that is most of the army that can deal with the tanks, or deal with the ultras gone. Yeah, I'm worried that this might even just be game for natural because he did lose so much of his... For, like his, his entire second base is gone. That's what this comes down to. There's a big hole on the map between all of his bases. Uh, Ling's going to drive off the SCVs. Marines attacking the north still. Not that many, but this game for how few workers were killed quickly on both sides racked up. 23 and 54 apiece. I don't know what meta game getting focus fired. Scarlet's good at the game. Oh, that was a good one. Not a lot of Marines on the ground either, so Corruptors did end up dominating, forcing that back. I mean, it's still three bases, not really mining to wait. What? One and a half bases. This is like some Rifkin level tactics right here. He's got a second planetary fortress coming down next to his already existing oh. planetary fortress. <laughs> That's like, where is it coming down? Well, you know, it, double the defense, more SimCity around at least one of them. Right, as you say, like, well, it, it does reduce surface area very technically, I suppose. And the planetary fortress, it hits hard enough to shoot through ultralisks. That being said, though. I don't think two planetaries is going to save him here. He needs, like, a tank with it. Yeah. Uh, there's also the chance that Scarlet still gets to a greater spire in Broodlords. Again, she's, like, not... She's not really mining. She's losing more drones, too, and there's, like, barely any minerals left. But, you know, you invest everything into a greater spire, I think, like, two or three Broodlords might just be good enough. Especially since Natural isn't yeah. prepared for that yet. He's not building any Vikings. Actually, where are the Corruptors? We've got six Corruptors still floating around the map, but these planetaries could easily be caustic. Uh, spray it. There's, there's actually not that many marines to defend. Uh, Corruptors, please. Save your queens. No? Okay. Queens are gonna save their queens time ago. Hello? They it's don't need no corruptor man. Jesus. Well, yeah, but also, I don't, I don't know if corruptors are men. Who knows? Well, she's oh. gonna go for a break on the planetaries. The first one goes down. Fungal growth stops the SCVs from getting able to repair. That was a really cool move, actually, on her part. Second one's about to go down. The ultra's chipping away at everything, and this is looking bad for natural. He's got an army to fight with. The supply's not bad, but the type is not good, and there's no way to stop these big behemoths. I was like, where is the rest of the army? <laughs> it's coming in from the natural. So, yeah, it's still like an okay sized army, but no, it's I mean, not. I want nope. to be like ultras are cool and caustic spray is BS and like balance wine, but honestly, the coolest part about that fight for me was her fungling the SCVs and stopping them from the repair. That's two planetary fortresses, which, like, okay, he doesn't have building armor for, but if he had a full repair on both, I don't think Scarlet actually would have broken that. Yeah, we're going to take incident losses with it, just uh, keeping the game pretty even. Well, this base apparently is going to get up and running, but Natural's actually running out of gas now, so that's going to mean that no medevacs, no liberators, barely even any marauders. No wood of mines so, either. I learned in a stalemate game, because I didn't know you could do this. You can caustic spray a building that's in the air. I thought you can only like caustic spray buildings that are on the ground. Yeah, I feel like we figured this out like a couple months ago. And I, I, I had assumed the opposite, so I wasn't too surprised. Yeah. Well, this might just be the end of the game here. Yeah, fungals, ultras. I mean, Scarlet wasn't even controlling this very well, to be honest. She's just kind of moving under it. And I don't blame her. She was in a position to do exactly that. It caught, the top left, she loses a base. She's pretty much mined out, actually. And, that's a little bit scary considering the situation the game's in. She's actually on a pretty low army supply. So while I was about to get in this big speech, but oh, she's got the game in the bag. It's maybe not the case. Yeah, the two Although tanks this... protected was pretty scary. This base isn't too important. This is only one medevac on the other side of the map, but it's out of energy. So, well, okay, natural sniping off hatcheries and he's killing bases out of Scarlet. Is that going to be enough? I don't mean like in terms of doing damage sure, literally, will those will those like marines and marauders that are almost dead be enough? They're almost dead. I don't know. I think they, like this is really just depending on the tanks protecting them. That's gonna eventually need to move. Yeah. I mean it's it's actually impossible for the ultras to, to get to them where they currently are. It's a really nice setup, but down here is a far more important base. She's just not gonna get it. It lifts up. One corruptor, not a problem. Oh, please pick off the infestors, they're right there. Natural, stop looking on the other side of the map. Uh, Fungal Growth catches the medevacs. This is something uh, they can't afford to lose. Now that Fungal Growth locks them in place, and that's gonna be game. GG. Yeah, GG. Scarlet ends up uh, taking another one. So I'm starting to think maybe Scarlet is the type of person who is vain enough <laughs> to send a, a replay back where only wins happen. Or maybe. On her latter run, she actually did just only win a bunch of games. I don't know.
Uh, thank you, Willander, for the one-year resub, by the way. Make sure to send us a message here on the channel to request your part two form for us to uh, send you a real-life part two. But that being said, guys, we now have to go start preparing for our Overwatch tournament. So I'm going to leave the stream on, and it'll be muted. So if you if you want to leave it open and just hang out and not worry about, like, sounds disturbing you, by all means, please do. But we have to mute some things. we got to prepare some things. So we'll be back in about 20 minutes to half an hour with the uh, Ting Overwatch finals. Phone. Not all phones no, are compatible commercial. with all... Don't watch the commercial, guys. That's not for you. The brackets is what I wanted to show you. Okay. Enjoy staring at the screen. We'll be back in half an hour. <laughs> 